Hello and welcome back to Uncut Long War 2. I promise you that name is going to feel like a joke once you see how many cuts are in this episode. But either way, we left off dealing with the rise of the surveillance drones and a small pod of Advent. We're going to be able to deal with them decently well, but in order to do that, we're going to have to start spending our ability charges and our grenades. It's always a little bit debatable whether this is the perfect opportunity to use our limited use items, but you know, sometimes you got to think, if I don't kill these guys right now, they're going to shoot me in the face on the next turn, and that's something you don't want to happen. So today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Ranger and some of the other classes and, and how they fit into a team composition, especially on these long missions. But before we do that, anybody wonder what a cooked mooten tastes like? That's flame broiled. That meat, it's got to be tender. It looks like it might taste kind of like pork. I don't know. Maybe the mooten is the evolution of the pig. But anyway, let's get back on track. Because we eliminated that last pod, some other enemies are going to start advancing towards us. And this grouping has three vipers in it and that is very very dangerous so that's three chances for a tongue attack and that is terrifying and we're also going to activate another pod of advent soldiers we got the advent extended family in here the rocketeer another high priority target the gunner as well and a new one the advent scout is essentially a, a beefed up version of the advent trooper they have the lone wolf ability they, they've got more aim I don't know what else they have. I don't know if they've got any other fancy tricks up their sleeves, but it's going to be tricky, and we're not going to be able to deal with all of these enemies in one turn. And right now, Ray King is taking a tremendous amount of fire. He's getting marked up as well. I wonder if they're going to shoot at him. No, they're going to go for Daryl, but he is in some full cover, so he's nice and secure, and that is a good thing because he doesn't have much health remaining. Then Ray King going to take one more shot, but the smoke grenade plus the added defense from aid protocol is going to make him very durable. Now, we're not going to be able to deal with both of these pods in one turn. We don't have the, enough firepower anymore to eliminate, uh, what, what is it, 10 enemies in, in one turn. It's just impossible. So we're going to have to go the crowd control route. And one of the perks from the technical class is called the concussion grenade. What it does, it's very low damage, but it reduces your frame rate, number one. But number two, it has a chance to disorient or stun the enemies that it hits. And we pretty much completely incapacitated that grouping of advent so now all we have to worry about is the vipers and getting tongued but in in what in incapacit in incapacitating that group of advent i inadvertently left donnie the dingus uh, out in the open and I don't have any aid protocols to toss out to him so I'm going to try something a little bit different I'm going to move Ray King in front of Donnie and he has a perk that whenever he uses his flamethrower he creates a cloud of defensive smoke which is the same as the smoke from a smoke grenade so in an ideal world this smoke is going to provide the both of them with enough defense to you know maybe turn the tide in their favor so that they don't get tongue lashed so let's see if that actually works out the way i planned on on having it work it's not gonna work Ray King's getting grabbed up and and we're starting to see the, the troubles of when you have multiple high priority targets on the map at the same time at activated at the same time which one do you go for first do you try and stop the rocketeer who can potentially blow up all of your guys or do you try and stop the viper who can potentially grab up one guy and ruin your day and Ray King gonna take a nice bit of damage right there from that advanced trooper I don't like where this is going somebody else has their sights set on Ray King and he is going to fall. He's not even going to get the bleed out. I got a mod installed that increases the, the, the chance of people bleeding out. But that mod said, fuck you. Ray King is going down today. So that's very sad. But we are going to keep pushing forward. You know, we can't just uh, save scum because we lost one guy. So, Ray, I do apologize because your boy is dead now. But we got to keep pressing forward. He made a sacrifice for Donnie Lau. So, you know, he's going out like a hero. Boom. So we ended up clearing out the rest of the enemies. We avenged our boy Ray King. Unfortunately, you know, even though we got our revenge, that's not going to bring him back to life, but it is going to make us feel a little bit better about ourselves. But then the alien activity is going to toggle up. Some mysterious things are going on in the fog of war. I wonder what it could be. I wonder how many more enemies are left on the map. I feel like I've done a lot of work, but apparently I have not done enough. We are going to get a pod with a Mooten Berserker and two normal Mooten, and this is going to be a very difficult pod to deal with because we're running out of tricks. We don't have many grenades left, and to be honest, I don't even think spending a grenade on 
this grouping of enemies will do much. We can't really destroy the cover on the Mutants because grenades aren't as strong as they once were. The destruction values are tuned differently. So we're, we're really going to have to find a, a way to, to deal with these guys. And I, the best way to do that is with the classes that have a sustainable and consistent amount of damage throughout the entire mission. So the sharpshooter, the ranger and also the gunner which we don't have any on this mission are three classes that i find to have the best sustainable approach to uh to damage dealing they don't rely too heavily on using their items to to get stuff done like the specialist once they run out of combat protocols they're no longer adept at killing mechanized units and we're gonna move donnie loud to a different position that is going to trigger the overwatch from the mutant and that laser beam is gonna go straight through the wall and damage him very severely and we're starting to see the we're in trouble we're in trouble but yeah the the ranger sharpshooter and gunner all have a sustainable damage output right whereas the technical class for example once they spend their rocket charges they become a glorified rookie the specialist once they use all their combat protocols they're no longer able to deal with mechanized units more effectively than anyone else because they're just another person with a gun but the ranger because of the light em up ability they always retain the ability to deal massive amounts of damage uh, at any given moment so what we're going to do here is we're going to use Morin going to take the first shot on this Mooten it did connect going to do a little bit of damage to him get some blood in his eyes probably should have taken that shot first but then we are going to chuck out a flashbang and try and get the berserker and the other Mooten uh, just a little bit a little bit weaker I mean they're, they're still very intimidating but uh, every little bit counts so, but for the reason we are doing these couple of episodes to, in, in the way that we are doing them is because Long War II is a tremendous learning experience. There's, there's so much to really figure out and understand. And this thing is climbing up the tower like fucking King Kong trying to go after that white lady. This is ridiculous. The Mooten Berserker is out of control and none of us can seem to connect. We got a little bit of a, a, a hit on the back with that Halo Reach SMG, but it didn't do much. Uh, it's barely a scratch and all it did was irritate the beast and now green jelly o'brien is staring face to face with uh something that we've only seen in nightmares but uh yeah because this is such a big learning experience and because i'm playing it on legend difficulty which is not a bright idea for your first playthrough attempt of a new experience uh, it's, it's, it's just exceptionally hard, and as I learn through the stuff, I, I want to share that information with you guys in a, a really concise way. I had to attempt this mission multiple times from multiple different squad compositions just to get it right, and I finally found a squad composition that worked out well, so it, it, I, I think it's worth sharing in this manner so I can get as much positive information out about it as possible. Because you know what? It's not impossible. This mod is beatable on Legendary. Fuck out of here, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. So we are staring face to face with the Berserker, but we still have a couple of tricks up our sleeves. We've still got a lot of options. We're going to use switch to our trooper and then we're going to mark target. So the rest of our squad is going to have an increased chance to hit. And then we're also going to get to fire our weapon as well. Pew, pew, pew. Did it not as much damage as I would have liked, but we are slowly chipping away at the beast. We're just getting everybody to fire shots. A grenade wouldn't help in this situation, but we don't need to worry about that. We've got our guns. Now, unfortunately, uh, little Mazer down there does not have any ammunition in his gun, but Green Jelly O'Brien She's gonna have to. She's gonna have to grab her cojones, her lady parts, and uh, shoot this thing straight in the face. And now we have sufficiently wounded the beast, and we can switch to our final wombo combo here, the ranger. We're gonna switch back to Morin, who is now standing directly in front of the beast, and he is going to do something very magical. Now, the ranger is is a beautiful class, and as, as you may or may not know. They have a double-barreled shotgun on their back, and that thing does a ridiculous amount of damage. And when you're standing face-to-face -face with a monster, you shove that shotgun inside of his chest, and you put an end to him. We haven't really seen that since Blackjack Carter did some work with it way back when, so we're seeing it again. And we do have another charge remaining with Morin, and we do have both barrels available on Mazer. So we're going to be able to use that trick again if the need arises. 
Boom. So the last piece of really pertinent information that I can bring about the Nerve Center mission is that it ends in a very exciting way. This is probably the most exciting encounter that I've ever gone through in XCOM. You finish it off with a boss battle with the Advent General. I mean, this was even more exciting than fighting the alien rulers because it felt like a real squad on squad kind of battle, right? You know, you're the commander and you've got your group of soldiers and you're giving them orders and then all of a sudden you got to fight with uh with an advent general who has his own squad with its with his own squad composition he's got an archer rocket mech he's got an engineer he's got a scout i think he's he's got a bunch of stuff but he's got his crew and his homies were sitting back here in their fucking lair while we were running amok destroying everything and he's like we will wait for them to get to the door if they make it here then we will fight or, or, or however he talks, you know, he's, he, <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's the general, man. He's got to have a funny voice. But either way, we are going to deal with the mech. We have the combat protocol saved up, and we also have the ability to snipe it to finish it off with Liam, the pure sniper. He, he is ready to do some work. He's got that damn good ground, so his chances to hit are impeccable. So here we go. Let's finish what we came here to do. So to make an exceptionally long, three hour long story short, there came a point when strategy fatigue had reached its maximum levels and I made a very, very dumb move. I sprinted our boy Mazer into the, into the thick of it and this advent was not having any of it and Mazer got killed. And that was the breaking point. Just about five-ish hours of XCOM is where I said, you know what? Fuck this game. I'm save scumming, and I'm going to beat this mission one way or another. So, you know, we wound up doing a little bit of a soft reset to where the, the fighting started. And we got into some new positioning. Things went a little bit better, but we ended up getting Donnie Lau shot up. But the bleed out did trigger. So this instantly made it so that we had five turns to clear out the remaining enemies that were on the map. We had a couple more advent soldiers running around. And we had the general, of course. We took a shot with the bolt caster from Daryl Sour Drill Lemon. And that hit him right in the gut, in the liver. So he is knocked down. He's stunned for a couple of turns. And this allowed the rest of our squad to lay some serious fire on his face and he is a very tough one indeed but we were able to take him out in time and Liam putting in some serious work and Morin as well clearing up the rest of the the stragglers that were on the sides and we did it we did it the only one left on the base was the lonely advent shield bearer and he did get some shields up before but he doesn't have anyone to shield now so what purpose does he have in life? Well, his only purpose now is to fuck with me. So he's going to run farther out of reach of all of my soldiers so he can reload. And I had enough. I cheated. I cheated a second time and I killed him. Donnie Lau is not going to die because that shield bear, I, I just wasn't having it. I wasn't having it. So, <laughs> you know, we didn't liberate our first region legitimately, but we, we did it. So that counts for something. The next time we come back, number one, we're going to be going back to the normal commentary, the live commentary as we play. And we're also going to continue meeting new soldiers. So as always, the name of the game is XCOM 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.